it's time to figure this thing out with a challenge. That's right, today I'm gonna to be doing a contrast challenge where I take two opposing sides of the color wheel and those are the only paints I get to use along with a bit of black and white. Here are all the rules in detail. So this challenge is an attempt to use two contrasting colors, primary or secondary colors on the color wheel in order to create a model. So in this one, I'm using purple and yellow. Now these can be any shade of purple and yellow. So I can use warm yellows, cold yellows, yellow ochres, anything as long as it's on that side of the color wheel. But I can't go too close to orange or green. Then because I'm not a monster, I also get to use black and white because those are shades technically, not colors. They can be any brand of paint, so it doesn't have have to be from one specific company. It can also be washes or contrast paints. Mixing of the paints in any way is completely allowed and I'm allowed to prime the model any way I want. The model I'm going to be using is this Robot Legion Guardian from the One Page Rules Patreon which you can find a link to in the description down below. So I wanted to start out before I paint the model to find out what kind of colors I can get with the colors that I'm allowed. So on my palette, I've put my black, my white, my purple, but also three yellows, a yellow ochre, a warm yellow, and a cool yellow. And I'm just gonna mix these together in order to figure out what kind of colors I can get. Now, the one interesting one is I can get a kind of greenish tone by mixing the black into the cool yellow. Now, I did know that that the pigment that they use for black when mixed with a yellow usually comes out green but if i mix some purple into that i can also get of a bit of a brown hue it's not a perfect brown it's more of a violet brown but that's still something that i can work with later on for the most part this was just me trying to figure out what i could do with my limited color palette so i'm going to really bend my last rule there quite a bit because I have a metallic primer. And so because I'm painting a robotic character, I kind of wanted some metallics and I do have a metallic primer. So technically this counts as a primer. However, I didn't feel comfortable putting this one specifically in my airbrush because it had chunks in it and I didn't want to clog up or mess up my airbrush. So I used a just a normal metallic paint instead with a bit of primer mixed in in order to not mess up my airbrush, but this will be my primer layer. Now I've gotta be really careful because I'm not allowed metallic as a color, so I can't cover up any of the primer layer that I want to be seen as metallic. And so what I'm gonna to do to start off is just paint some neutral gray over the cloaks for later because I'm gonna want those to be the yellow tones and it's just gonna go over a lot easier on top of a gray. But also be careful not to get that gray on any of the metallics. So I wanted the metallic base layer because he is a robot and I wanted to give him that painted robot that's really, really old look. So the way I'm gonna do that is to paint dark purples over the primer but leaving the edges so I could get that kind of battle damage look. So the first thing I want to do is make sure I can get some highlights out of it and so the first layer is I'm actually going bright so I'm mixing some of the purple, some of the yellow, and some of the white just to get a light tone to start with. And then using a fine brush I'm just keeping this centered in all the plates and so you can see on the shoulder here uh, I'm kind of keeping this away from the edges. Now I'm not going over all the metallics with this, some I'm just going to leave as metal, but anything that looks like it was painted in the past, that's what I'm putting this on. And so now I'm going to add a the, the proper purple, and so this is a darker layer that's going over top, and what I plan to do with this one is leave some of that lighter streaks and edges and those will kind of act as highlights for this battle damage. Because I went with a really bright metallic instead of a dark one I'm gonna have to add those shadows manually so I'm gonna do some black lining here uh, but I'm not gonna do straight black I'm gonna add some of the purple just to keep it in the same color range and also to add some of that color since this is a color challenge uh, I use a fine brush and I'm just 
going between the plates and pads and underneath the deepest recesses in order to just give them a very deep shadow. Now you can also do some of the battle damage scratches here as well. So any anywhere it looks like it was nicked or scratched or chipped, I also added some of this black just to define it a bit more. And I didn't hold myself back either. I put this black lining over all the bare metal as well. Now I do want to make the paint look like it's being lit and so I'm going to add shades and highlights to the painted parts. Uh, it feels weird saying that because the whole thing's being painted but I mean the the chipped paint on the model itself and so here I'm just doing the shading part of it and then adding some white I'm going to be highlighting the flat parts that like the round flat parts so shoulder pad here is rounded and I want to kind of show that it's lighter where the light would be hitting it. So these aren't highlights per se, they're just making it brighter in the rounded areas towards my light source. Like I said in the rules, any form of these colors is okay. So here I'm going to use a Nuln Oil, which is a black wash, and an Army Painter Purple Wash. And this is what I'm going to use to do the metallics. If you are going to follow along to this challenge, just remember that this stuff like this is okay. It's about the color, not where it comes from. And so if you've got contrast paints or oil paints, as long as it's black, yellow, purple, or white, you're good to go. I'm also going to do this in some places on the paint chip parts, just to give it a little bit more um, shade on that darker side of the model. So when it comes to highlighting the metallics, I don't really have a lot of choice because I don't have a lighter metal in order to go with. So here I'm gonna try, I'm gonna take some creative license, I guess you would call it, and I'm going to use uh, the white in order to highlight the metallics and just do the very edges. And it might make it a little bit cartoony, but in this case, I think I'd rather the highlights than worry about that. And I do mix in a little black and purple just to keep it a, toned down a little bit so it's not pure white, but also have some of that color in there because again, it's a color challenge. I want there to be more color in the model. Now for the cloak. Because I knew that the black and the cool yellow made a green, I thought that would be a good way to go for kind of a, a worn out cloak. And so here I just start with a mix of the two, straight up just black and cool yellow, nothing else, and I paint my base coat over top of it. And just to be a little extra, I decide to paint the inside of the cloak a little bit of a different tone. So I add a bit of the yellow, one of the yellows, um, in order to make it just a slightly different. So it's not completely a different color, but if you look between the back and the front, they will be different in tone. And I darken the cloak up by using a just a more of the black in the mix itself. And with this, I kind of paint all the deep recesses and the shaded side of the cloak. Now this I do um, knowing as it's just going to be a sketch because I'll have to blend this out with the lighter color later. And so here I just added a little bit more, a little white to my original mix. And I'm using this to lighten up the cloak. And this is a sketch I guess you would call it. I'm just figuring out where my highlights are going to be so they're going to look a little rough here. But then once that's done I take all three of the colors that were on my palette there so the neutral tone, the dark tone, and the light tone and I'm going to use these to kind of wet blend and blend on the model in order to get the finer finish of that cloak. Now this truth be told was one of I think one of the best parts of the model that turned out really really well. For the front of the cloak, it's going to be the same process, so the same highlight and shade, but mixing in a few different colors. So for the shade, I mix in a bit of black and purple, and for the highlight, I use kind of the lighter brown instead of the green in order to make those highlights. And then I just blend them out like I did on the front. 
are on the back. Now, because of the way this challenge is, I did want to have something that was a nice saturated yellow. And so for this little shawl on the front, that's what I'm doing here. Starting by adding a bit of purple just to get my shade colors. But for the most part, I'm highlighting up to the golden yellow that you get from mixing yellow ochre and the warm yellow. For the weapon, I was thinking I would do a non-metal metal gold just to use some of the yellows that I have and to make it look metallic. But then I decided, you know what? This is a great spot to do a piece de resistance, something to show off the contrast between these two colors. And so I'm going with a saturated yellow and a saturated purple, blending between them. Kind of like you see on Necron weapons where people have the very bright blues or purples and it looks really cool. In this case, I'm using both. So it's yellow and purple. And I'm also using this as a way to kind of show off my technique for doing these blends and why I use chisel brushes in order to do kind of blending work like this because you can add some yellow to one side, some purple to the other, and have the brush do the blending in the middle as you pull it off across these flat surfaces. At some point I do want to make another video explaining how I do these blends with these kinds of brushes in more detail. And once I've got the nice gradient, I'm just going to use some lighter tones of those colors in order to put the highlights on the weapon and make it look sharp. Now, full disclosure on this one, I was doing some just sharp white highlights on the very tips where the light would ping off of it and I kind of really messed up the front of this blade. The paint started peeling back. It, it just wasn't cooperating and I got frustrated so I did fix this off camera but here it might look a little weird. The last few things I did to finish the model off were to paint the eyes just a very bright yellow to make them look like they're glowing and also very thin layers of a glaze just to seem like that have that glow spread out from the eye hole and the little gem in the middle of his chest here which I just painted using again black and yellow uh, the same ones I did the back of the cloak with but because I was going a bit brighter and a bit darker it doesn't look the same but it does look like a gem using some very bright lights as point highlights so here's a look at the final model i think it actually turned out really well i had a lot of fun doing the purple and the battle damage making it seem like it was a painted rusted machine even though I have a little limited color palette. If I did have some oranges, I could have added a bit more rust in there to make it look extra old and damaged. If I had metallics, I would have been able to do actual golds and, and proper silver highlights. If I had a red, I would have done that for the gem and make it look a little bit different and maybe even have the eyes a different color as well. But all in all, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. You can really learn a lot by limiting your color palette. And even though I kind of cheated with the other coat, it's a robot. I hope you for, can forgive me. Thank you for joining me on this journey today. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more. I'll be uploading as much as I can. And until then, I'll see you later.